Out from the pack emerges something new. Reliable, fuel stingy, smooth as glass, quick starting, with power to spare. A world-class engine. The Buick 3800 engine. On the surface, the 3800 engine looks a lot like the Buick 3.8 liter engine. After all, it is a sequentially fired 90 degree V6 engine. But take a closer look. The differences start with the basic engine design. During the development of the even firing 90 degree V6, the common crankshaft crank pins were split and offset 30 degrees. This design allows each cylinder to be fired at equal 120 degree intervals of crankshaft rotation, producing a smoother running engine. But the flange required to separate the crank pins offset the connecting rods from the center line of the cylinders and consequently from the center of the piston pins, making it necessary to use full skirt pistons. The full skirt prevented the pistons from cocking in the bore. In addition, Higher tension piston rings were used to decrease blow-by of combustion gases. It seemed like an acceptable trade-off, but as the demand for improved performance increased, it became necessary to take another look at the engine. The solution lengthened the 3800 engine block by shifting the left bank of cylinders forward and the right bank rearward. This places the connecting rods in the center of the cylinders and on the center of the piston pins, providing some important advantages, like making it possible to replace the full skirt pistons with lighter slipper skirt pistons and reducing piston ring tension by 30%. Other resulting changes include slightly longer connecting rods and smaller piston pins. The piston pins are press fit into the connecting rods. However, unlike the 3.8 liter engine, the connecting rods can be assembled in either direction. The cylinder heads have also been redesigned. The most notable change is to the intake ports, improving injector targeting. By directing fuel spray precisely at the back of the intake valves, it is possible to reduce the amount of wall wetting. This results in improved throttle response, increased fuel economy, and reduced emissions. The exhaust ports on the cylinder heads have also been revised. By providing a direct and less restricted flow of exhaust gases, exhaust back pressure is reduced, preventing unnecessary power loss. The revisions to both the intake and exhaust ports resulted in a measurable increase in volumetric efficiency for the 3800 engine over the 3.8 liter engine. Like the 3.8 liter engine, Torque to yield cylinder head bolts are used to provide consistent clamping load. It is extremely important that the correct procedure be used when tightening torque to yield head bolts. Start by installing the cylinder head bolts, then tighten each bolt to 25 foot pounds following the proper sequence. Next, tighten each bolt a quarter of a turn or 90 degrees in the proper sequence. However, if the bolt torque reaches 60 foot-pounds on any bolt, stop at that point. Finally, in proper sequence, tighten each bolt an additional quarter turn. Remember to stop if bolt torque reaches 60 foot-pounds. The complete cylinder head bolt tightening procedure is provided in the reference manual. Completely new on the 3800 engine is the use of a balance shaft. Supported by ball bearings, the balance shaft is designed to eliminate primary imbalance characteristics. Two types of imbalance characteristics are produced by the engine, vertical and horizontal. The crankshaft counterbalance weights are designed to eliminate vertical imbalance, but horizontal imbalance still exists. Because of horizontal imbalance, the engine appears to swivel on its mounts. The balance shaft is used to correct horizontal imbalance. 
To remove the balance shaft and bearings from the engine, start by removing the intake manifold and lifter guide retainer. Then remove the engine front cover, camshaft sprocket, timing chain and camshaft gear, balance shaft drive gear bolt, balance shaft retainer bolts, retainer and balance shaft gear. Then, using a slide hammer, remove the balance shaft. To remove the balance shaft rear bearing, remove the flywheel and balance shaft rear plug. Next, using the special rear bearing tool J36995, remove the balance shaft rear bearing. The front bearing is press fit onto the balance shaft and cannot be serviced separately. After removing the balance shaft, always replace the balance shaft and both bearings. To install the balance shaft and bearings, start by dipping both bearings in clean engine oil. Then, using the special rear bearing installation tool, J36995, install the balance shaft rear bearing. With the rear bearing in place, install the balance shaft rear plug. Now place the balance shaft in the block. Next, using installation tool J36996, seat the balance shaft. With the balance shaft positioned in the block, install the front bearing retainer and torque the bolts to specification. Before installing the balance shaft drive gear and bolt, thread locking compound must be applied to the bolt threads. Service kit 105 is recommended for use in four areas on the 3800 engine. The balance shaft drive gear bolt, rocker arm bolts, intake manifold bolts, and valve cover bolts. To use the kit, start by cleaning the bolt threads. Then spray on the primer. After the primer has dried, apply the thread locking adhesive. Next, install the balance shaft drive gear and bolt. The balance shaft drive gear bolt must be tightened to 20 newton meters or 14 foot pounds plus 35 degrees using torque angle meter J36660. Now, turn the camshaft so that with the camshaft sprocket temporarily installed, the timing mark is straight down. Then, with the camshaft sprocket removed, turn the balance shaft so that the timing mark on the balance shaft gear points straight down. Next, install the camshaft gear and align the marks on the balance shaft gear and camshaft gear. The steps for installing the timing chain and sprockets are the same as those used on previous engines. For the complete procedure, refer to the know-how reference manual. The 3800 engine valve train is similar to that of the 3.8 liter engine. It uses hydraulic roller lifters with lifter guides that fit over the lifters to prevent them from turning when installed in the engine. And pushrod guides have been added to help improve valve train durability. Like the 3.8 liter engine, the rocker arms mount on individual pedestals. Before installing the rocker arm bolts, be sure to apply thread locking compound. Now the bolt can be installed and torqued to specification. Another new feature is the use of a needle bearing cam button instead of the plastic button previously used. The cam button and spring are designed to reduce cam chucking. A new one piece intake manifold is used on the 3800 engine. The intake runners are redesigned to match the new cylinder heads. Notice that each cylinder is supplied by individual intake runners. Throughout the engine, special attention was given to improving engine sealing. To improve the seal between the intake manifold and cylinder head, an O-ring type gasket is used. The new gaskets use built-in rubber O-rings, making it possible to properly seal the intake manifold using less torque on the intake manifold bolts. When installing the intake manifold, be sure to clean all oil from sealing surfaces using brake clean or an equivalent solvent. Then install the intake manifold gaskets and intake manifold seals. Next, apply sealer 1234-5336, which is an improved RTV sealer 
to the ends of the manifold seals and install the intake manifold. Using thread locking kit 1052624, apply thread locking compound to the intake manifold bolts and install the bolts, tightening each bolt to 88 inch pounds following the sequence provided in the know-how reference manual. After all of the bolts have been torqued, retorque each bolt using the same sequence. Valve covers designed to improve sealing and reduce valve train noise are used on the 3800. Five captured bolts are used to secure the valve cover to the cylinder head. When the valve covers are removed, the bolts remain attached. This makes service much easier. Instead of gaskets, a reusable O-ring seal glued into a groove around the outer edge of each valve cover provides a leak-resistant seal. If the seals are not damaged, they do not have to be replaced when the valve covers are removed. Remember, thread locking compound must be applied to the bolts during installation of the valve covers. The 3800 engine is equipped with a Bosch fuel rail and director plate fuel injectors. Optimum fuel pressure is maintained within the fuel rail by the pressure regulator. Like previous systems, a fuel pressure tap is provided so that fuel pressure can be measured. Internally, the new director plate fuel injectors are the same, with the exception of the director plate added to the spray tip. Four holes drilled into the plate meter fuel spray in a precise conical pattern. The director plate injectors improve fuel atomization and are less sensitive to fuel quality. The 3800 engine uses an all-new two-piece cast aluminum throttle body. Engine coolant is routed through a cavity in the throttle body to prevent icing, and a compound throttle linkage design is used to provide progressive throttle response. Attached to the throttle body are the throttle position sensor, idle air control valve, and mass air flow sensor. The throttle position sensor and idle air control valve can be replaced separately, but the mass airflow sensor and throttle body are serviced as an assembly. The 3800 engine uses the computer controlled coil ignition or C cubed I ignition system. One of the most notable changes is that the coil and module assembly has been moved to a bracket at the front of the engine. This makes it easier to change the rear spark plugs and to remove the rear valve cover. But that is not the only change. Only type one coil and module assemblies are used on the 3800 engine. The coil pack is identical to earlier type one systems, but the module is different and cannot be interchanged with the older systems. Inside the new module, a Zener diode placed in the primary circuit limits secondary output. This was done to prevent coil output from exceeding 25,000 volts. On older systems, secondary voltage was not limited and in some cases could exceed 75,000 volts, resulting in system damage. To prevent interchanging the two modules, the locating tabs on the 14-pin connector have been repositioned, making it impossible for the older module to be connected to the redesigned 14-pin connector. It is important to note that the coil firing order has changed. Now the first coil fires cylinders one and four, the second coil fires cylinders five and two, and the third coil fires cylinders three and six. Also new to the 3800 engine is the fast start ignition concept. The fast start system provides a quicker starting engine and the potential for future engine advancements. The key to the system is the crank sensor. The sensor uses a four terminal connector instead of the three terminal connector used on 3.8 liter engines. However, the main difference is the number of interrupter rings. Two interrupter rings attached to the harmonic balancer trigger the sensor. The outside ring has 18 windows spaced at 10 degree intervals. The signal produced by this ring is referred to as the 18X signal and is used to indicate engine speed. The inside ring has three windows spaced at different intervals. 
It produces the 3x signal, which informs the ignition module of crankshaft position. Because the windows are spaced at different intervals, the signal from any window identifies the position of the number one and number four pistons. Both the 18x and 3x signals are required to start the engine. Gauge tool J37089 must be used to adjust the crank sensor on the 3800 engine. Start by removing the harmonic balancer, then loosen the sensor pinch bolt and install the gauge tool. Adjust the sensor so that the tool blades slide easily through the sensor, then tighten the pinch bolt. The other side of the tool is used to check the interrupter rings. After installing the gauge tool on the harmonic balancer, rotate the gauge. If the tool contacts the interrupter rings, the interrupter rings are damaged and the harmonic balancer must be replaced. The cam sensor is much like the sensor used on the 3.8 liter engine. It mounts on the engine front cover and a magnetic interrupter attached to the camshaft sprocket triggers the sensor when the number one cylinder is at 25 degrees after top dead center. However, the function of the cam sensor is different. The cam signal is no longer needed to start the engine. It is used only to start sequential fuel injection. When the engine is cranked, the crank sensor 18x signal is sent to ignition module terminal G and the 3x signal is sent to ignition module terminal H. After both signals are received by the ignition module, it begins firing the spark plugs. The same sequence signals the ECM to fire the fuel injectors. When both the 18x and 3x signals are received by the ECM, it begins firing the injectors in the simultaneous fuel injection mode. After engine speed reaches 600 RPM and the cam signal is received by the ECM, it begins firing the injectors in the sequential fuel injection mode. Troubleshooting the fast start ignition is similar to previous systems. With these exceptions, if the cam signal is lost, a code 41 will be set. The engine will continue to run and can be restarted, but a loss in performance may be noticed. If the 3x signal is lost, a trouble code is not set. The engine continues to run, but cannot be restarted. If the 18x signal is lost, the engine stops and cannot be restarted. So, if a customer complains that the car was running fine on the way to work, but could not be started when it was time to leave, one possible cause of the problem could be a missing 3x signal to the ignition module. In this case, the 3x signal voltage at terminal H should be 9.5 volts with the engine cranking. The reference manual provides the correct voltage readings for each ignition module terminal, both with the key on and also with the engine running or cranking. Another new feature found on the 3800 engine is the digital EGR system. Unlike conventional EGR valves, the digital EGR valve is not operated by vacuum. Instead, three solenoids are used to control EGR operation. The system improves performance by precisely controlling exhaust gas flow into the combustion chamber. This permits less valve timing overlap, resulting in a smoother running engine. Energizing one of these three solenoids causes the armature assembly to lift off its seat, opening one of the three different sized orifices. With the valve opened, exhaust gas is routed through a stainless steel pipe to the EGR base and into the intake manifold. The solenoids use a common power terminal with individual ground terminals. By grounding the solenoid circuits, the ECM energizes the solenoids in one of seven combinations. The system is designed so that a solenoid failure causes the ECM to set a code 63 indicating a small EGR failure, code 64 for a medium EGR failure, or code 65 for a large EGR failure. The EGR valve is replaced as a complete assembly. To test the EGR valve, turn the engine off and disconnect the EGR connector. 
Then install a jumper wire from connector terminal D to terminal D of the EGR valve. Start the engine and connect one end of a second jumper wire to ground and one at a time touch the other end to EGR terminals A, B and C. If engine speed changes as each terminal is touched, the EGR valve is operating properly. The 3800 engine uses a hot wire mass airflow sensor to measure the flow of air into the engine. By mounting the sensor directly on the throttle body, the chance of unmetered air entering the engine is reduced. The sensing element is positioned within a passage inside of the throttle body and is heated to 75 degrees centigrade above the temperature of the inlet air. As the amount of air passing the element changes, the electrical current necessary to keep it 75 degrees centigrade above the temperature of the air also changes. It is the change in electrical current that is used as an indication of airflow. As mentioned earlier, the mass airflow sensor is calibrated to match the throttle body and cannot be serviced separately. If service is required, the complete throttle body assembly must be replaced. Another important difference on the 3800 engine is that similar to throttle body injected or TBI engines, adjustment of the throttle position sensor is not necessary. When using a scan tool or the cam's dynamic display, the throttle position sensor reading is acceptable if it is between 0.2 to 1.25 volts at closed throttle. Also new to the 3800 engine is a torque management system. Developed to increase drivetrain life and improve transmission shift quality without compromising engine performance, the system works in three different operating modes. In the full throttle management mode, the ECM momentarily retards spark timing during full throttle takeoffs to prevent excessive drivetrain stress. Spark timing is retarded only in first gear and at vehicle speeds under 5 miles per hour. Timing can be retarded up to 15 degrees, depending on engine torque. In the shift management mode, the ECM retards spark timing for a few milliseconds on high throttle upshifts and downshifts. On 1-2 and 2-3 upshifts, with throttle positions above 50%, Spark timing is retarded up to 25 degrees. On 3-2 downshifts, spark timing is retarded up to 15 degrees, reducing the jerk that typically accompanies high throttle downshifts. The drivetrain abuse control mode is designed to protect the drivetrain in the event the vehicle is shifted into drive or reverse at high engine speeds, like while trying to rock a vehicle out of mud or snow. In this mode, the ECM limits fuel delivery if the vehicle is shifted from park or neutral to either drive or reverse with engine speeds above 3,750 RPM and vehicle speed below 10 miles per hour. The 3800 uses the GMP4 ECM, which offers more capacity and allows increased control of engine operation. It is a full-function ECM with the capability for bi-directional communication. A memory calibration unit, or MEMCAL, is used to provide the functions previously controlled by the PROM, CALPAC, and ESC module. One major advantage of the GMP4 ECM is that it uses quad driver modules to protect the ECM from possible overload in the circuits controlled by the ECM. If a failure in an ECM controlled circuit does occur, a code 26 will be set. Including code 26, 12 new trouble codes are used with the 3800 engine. Some of the codes are referred to as soft codes. This means the ECM stores the code in its memory, but the service engine soon light does not come on. The 3800 is the fifth generation of Buick's 90-degree V6 engine. Since its introduction in 1962, this engine design has become a mainstay for GM passenger cars. Now, with increased horsepower, torque, fuel economy, and smoothness, 
The 3800 offers real proof of Buick's commitment to producing the great American road car.